going on you guys welcome back to channel Anders and today's video is going to be kind of a mashup of the past week or so what's up buddy <laughs> going to be a mashup of the past week or so working on the c55 finally washing the mo55 giving you guys an update on the cooler works pro shifter and what i've had to do to get it to work perfectly so yeah all that will be thrown into here whatever order whatever comes at you we'll see but anyways enjoy and uh, be on the lookout for some upcoming cool videos might get mentioned in this video so yeah see ya you're washing your car <laughs> no yeah. all right guys we haven't washed the car in like 20 years so <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a wash today it's probably the dirtiest it's ever been in its life it's pretty oh. bad so we will work our magic are you gonna help me all right so we'll see got all my supplies over here i'm gonna use a pressure washer again you got uh the iron fallout remover little life hack and then we're using yeah hold on <laughs> we're using the ice washer wax Right you want to see and then we'll probably end up using this again just because it's easy you can put it when it's still wet and we got this for like the plastics okay that's about it Let's see how it goes Tell you guys with confidence, the best thing about using the pressure washer Whoa. is all this stuff. Like in between the window trim. Uh, it wasn't pressure washing, it takes forever to try to get all that out. But it makes it a lot easier, just literally. Spraying it off. I don't have to spend so much time trying to <laughs> get all that off. No. Time saving hack. We're on phase three. <laughs> We did this second. Spray this. You guys know what this looks like. Makes things turn purple. Gets the iron out. So now we just sprayed it down with the soap. about halfway done as far as washing the car um already a big difference <laughs> that's just washing it with soap and water and wiping it down um obviously uh car washing people know ideally you do this when the sun's down but um working with the time i got so i'll do this side now just try to work fast so it's not drying um, as I'm, you know, I don't want to let the soap dry, what I mean. But yeah, I'll do this and then we'll give it a quick wipe down with that, uh, turtle wax ceramic, um, hybrid coating. I like the seal and shine the best, but this one you really got to take your time with and you want to be out of sunlight. Got to wipe it on and then let it flash and then wipe it off. This one. You can put on when it's wet and then just wipe it off. So I used this last time, it, it held up for quite a while. Um, I did like three coats of this and the wax. Um, I don't know if that's in here with this or not. No. Um, 
on on the c55 a while ago that video is like super old now but uh the car still has like water beating and it's been i don't know probably close to two years since i like spent all that time doing that so pretty good um, i love these products super cheap and do the job really well so yeah i'll go ahead and finish this up you gotta do that side and then the back of the car and i'll go ahead and do the engine bay as well so i'll show you guys that all right, so there's a lot of sap on the car and uh, soap is not really cutting through it. So life hack for you guys, alcohol wipes, take sap off super easy. You can also just use rubbing alcohol, something um, it's safe for the car. I mean, obviously you don't let it sitting forever, but even if you did, I don't think it would do much. Um, but yeah, wipe it off after you're done, soap it off, rinse it off. But I'm gonna use these, make a little handy trick to uh, get the sub <laughs> sub any uh, bugs and sap off of the car so let's find the spot oh, there was one around here yep right here it comes right off as soon as you start wiping a little bit gone so i'm just going to go around and find the little spots that i know got the sap on it there's a lot on the uh, roof as well so I don't want to put any coating on this if I got a bunch of sap laying around. So I'm going to try to get rid of all the sap. And like I said, just wipe this off once you're done so it doesn't leave any residue or anything like that. All right, guys, we have finished washing the car. I'm going to wash the wheels um, and then engine bay. And I don't know, I'm going back and forth if I'm even going to do the uh, hybrid wax on it because the car needs to be, like, properly polished and clay barred and all those things so i kind of don't even feel like putting that on it um i will put the seal and shine on all the plastics because it really helps uh, rejuvenate those but i'm thinking to make this easier on myself because i don't get the chance to wash the cars that much i think i'm just gonna wait and probably do this um, when i got proper time um, and try to polish the car and then at least like clay bar it and polish out the bad spots and then ceramic coat it so I can just save myself time in the future. Um, and I mean, I can use this stuff as well. Like that worked pretty much just as good as a ceramic coating, just didn't last as long, but about two years uh, was pretty good. Um, and it's still, like I said, working uh, fairly well on the C55. So, Black paint is so hard to take care of, um, especially if it wasn't properly maintained like throughout its, you know, life, which this is, it has decent paint, but you can tell it has a ton of swirl marks and stuff. So people are probably taking it through drive-through washes or just not, not washing it properly. So it looks good on camera, but if you get up close, there's lots of little imperfections and swirls and whatnot. So. I'll uh, try to take care of any bad ones that I see. Like I found a random spot on the roof right here. Just like some weird kind of scrapiness. Um, this stuff is soap, but like that weird scrape right there. So I'll, I'll polish that out um, and any other bad spots. So that's, that's really the only one that I found like bad, bad spots. So try to take care of that. Uh, wheels, engine bay, and see if I want to do the hybrid coating or not. Look how fresh these look. <laughs> I just realized the last time I washed this car was before I had these wheels on. That's when I had the old chip and chrome wheels. Look at this, before and after. Beautiful and bright. For those that don't know, I got these um, refurbished set basically. Um, for a steel this is like right before they started going up in price uh, even at the time it was a really good deal i think i got them for like uh man, i can't remember like 100 bucks a piece or something like that and i mean nowadays for a set of these like a nice set refurbished set probably gonna pay 900 or more all right wheels are clean Looking like a whole new truck already. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the engine bay real quick. Show you guys that. Not gonna do anything too crazy, but 
see how it is in there. I need to vacuum the inside after I do all this. too bad in here but you can definitely clear it out i need to grab all this stuff nastiness out of here too all right so i just vacuumed all that crud out at the top i'm using a mix of the um, iron remover and this is just a mix of a uh, simple green you can use purple power or simple green either one they're um wire safe and super mild but still do a really good job cleaning so i'll just use this and kind of spray everything down and just give it a light hose off afterwards um i'll probably go in here and scrub a few things off as well so let's see how it goes so just a light coating with the soap after i sprayed it down with the other stuff i'm gonna go ahead and get in there and try to agitate a few areas and get any big spots I see out. Um, I tried to hit down here where it used to have an oil leak. Um, try to get rid of some of that. So I'll go for it now. All right, and right after I finish washing the engine, I usually turn it on just so it can burn off if anything is anywhere near something sensitive uh, electronics wise. So I'll let it run for a few minutes and get hot. All right, so engine bay's done, wheels are done, car is washed. I mean, it already looks a thousand times better than before. Um, I decided I'm, I'm not gonna go for the hybrid spray um, just because the car really needs to be corrected um, before trying to put any type of coating on it. So I'll probably have time to do that this summer properly, spend a day on it and go through everything, polish it, clay bar, all that, all that good stuff. So for now, I'm just gonna put this on all basically the rubber trim and plastic trim because this helps a lot um, protect it and kind of restore it to regular black color. Um, ceramic coating works really well too, for those that don't know. There's all those like r rubber rejuvenating products or plastic colorizers or, you know, revamp, but um, ceramic coating or this stuff I find works probably the best on the plastics. If you have other things you recommend, let me know. But uh, I'm not a car washing pro by any means, so probably is a lot of other stuff out there um, that I don't know about. So let's put this on. All right, guys, we're almost done, but uh, my wife's on the job right now. She wanted to help out. Last step for today. Everything else is pretty clean. All right, we're taking a break from car washing to do some boxing. Oh, 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 it's a, oh, yeah, oh, hey, you're like mom, dude, look, look, wow, <laughs> all right, guys, inside is all vacuumed out, I also finally, Took those water spots off of the uh, roof. They said it was some simple green, still a little bit. I think my wife forgot to vacuum that part up. But <laughs> um, yeah, finally took those spots off the roof. And yeah, it's all vacuumed. I just wanted to make a really quick video giving you guys an update or a part two for the BMW Pro Shifter from Cooler Works. There's been a lot of like trial and error and figure things out just because this is a brand new thing. Um, I don't have any real reference to go to besides like shifter adjustments. So it's been trial and error uh, to say the least for the last few weeks. So let me give you guys kind of a view of how the shifter is and uh, kind of recap. And then I'll tell you guys what type of changes I've had to make. So here's the shifter again. Don't mind the mess. I've uh, pulled the center council out just to uh, make some further adjustments. So first of all, the shifter is excellent still. I haven't changed my mind about that whatsoever. The feel is great. The shifts are awesome. Um, so overall, it's fantastic. The thing that has been problematic um, is the actual 
shear fraud setup that I had previously. So if you guys remember in the other video, we basically had a bolt um, going through connecting uh, from one side of the shifter to the actual shift rod and linking them together. So that was the first hiccup that we kept running into was related to that because the bolt kept wanting to back off. Even when I tried to put uh, the double nut on the end of it, it just wanted to back off no matter what. Uh, just after driving and vibration and all that stuff and you know being able to swivel back and forth it's not really supposed to do that because it's a bolt it's just trying to hold hold both pieces tight and eventually it would lose grip no matter what and as soon as it got out of a certain spec it would mess up shifts because it would no longer be aligned uh, where it needed to be so to resolve that issue you can see we now have uh, this side is actually an Allen head, and then the other side is just a regular nylon nut. And you can see we used a bunch of washers here, um, and this is not a regular bolt. This is a basically a, a threaded dowel bolt. I don't know what you call them exactly, a, a threaded dowel pin. So the majority of this pin uh, is all just, you know, cylindrical, no threads. It's not threaded until the end. So what we did is we found one that was a little bit longer than our setup here. I actually could have gone with one size shorter, but we were at the store and I didn't have the exact measurement for the width of both of these pieces. So I just kind of estimated. Um, so we used the washers on this side basically as, you know, spacing out to the point needed. So all of the portion that these washers are on is just a cylinder. It's not threaded or anything. Um, the end portion is the only part that's threaded. So that's holding it on tight. That way the shifter can move back and forth a lot easier because it's swiveling inside of the actual hole portion on the bottom of the shifter. And it's not, um, you know, it's not fighting the bolt every time or trying to force the bolt to come loose on each side because it has a little more free room to move back and forth now this was only done a few days ago and i've only got to test it out a few times so far so good it hasn't come loose on me in that time span the other bolt was coming loose it would basically come loose after the first few days it was coming loose pretty much every day when i would get home from my drive from work so that was one resolution the other part of the equation was i'm not gonna be able to, you're not gonna be able to see through here but down here in the tunnel. There it is. Down there in the tunnel. Uh, we ended up putting a longer bolt um, through the middle portion. What's that? Are you putting nitrous? No. <laughs> uh, ended up putting a longer bolt to keep the front portion of the rod attached to the transmission because that bolt was barely long enough to thread through after we made that little um, washer portion. So we also put a lock nut on it or a lock washer and that should stay put um, now that it's situated on there. Because when I went to pull the rod out when I was trying to figure this whole fiasco out with the old bolt, uh, the front transmission bolt, you know, onto the, the shifter joint wasn't on there very solid so it was it was kind of gradually coming loose so i tightened that one up and i put a little bit of loctite on it and like i said used a lock washer so i don't think it's going to come anywhere now um besides that i don't i mean the only other thing that i had to adjust was the um centering spring you can adjust it by that I guess my only complaints with that is there's no real way to grab on to the back portion to actually be able to unlock that nut. So what I've been doing is basically just like twisting it with the Allen head while pushing on it with the old shifter rod, uh, pushing on that from the side because uh, I needed it to go to the left. 
to center this up so that you know straight up and down is third and fourth um and you want to have you know little to no free play either way so um it's not a perfect science but that's really the only issue related to the shifter itself the other stuff is just you know me doing this on a car that this wasn't intended for and trying to figure that out that's just my own qualms um but yeah that centering adjustment is the only thing for the shifter that i i don't know how they intend you to do that because it's very hard to reach on the side i don't know what type of wrench you would be able to use um to actually grab onto that because that pin as you can see is right above it so i can't just stick a normal wrench in there and grab onto it because it would have to go you know straight into that way and it can't grab onto that top portion because of that dowel so like i said i've just kind of been manhandling it and pushing it slowly um to the left as I'm going. Um, the only other change I'm planning on making, I'm probably gonna put um, just a bar of, like a flat bar of steel going across the bottom to connect both of these, rather than using, you know, the different size washers and all that. I'll just put one bar going underneath and that way uh, it'll tie these two together. But this part has been really solid. Um, this hasn't like flexed at all. All of these bolts have stayed tight. Uh, the front one has stayed tight. And when I actually have everything in here and I, I re-installed uh, some of the sound deadening foam, it was totally quiet. Like it's not making any weird noises or anything when I'm driving. Uh, when I drive it like this, it's super loud because all the noise is coming through. But as soon as I... Um, put that stuff in there and put the center console back in super quiet so anyways uh ships look like this first second third fourth fifth and whoops missed it okay probably six is hard because the clutch is not down there we go that's six fifth and sixth so again first second third fourth fifth sixth and reverse all right well that'll do it for now all right guys so quick update for you Let me take my mask off um got the center console piece i just got the center console to fit in i had to remove the basically little cup holder thing there's a little uh torque screw that holds it in um I was being dumb and forgot the torque screw was there to actually take that piece out. So I started like dremeling it and then I was like, oh yeah, you can just take it out. So that is not going to work because it's faulting on the back of the shifter. But I do think we can still get this to fit if I dremel this down and try to try to dremel all this down as close as tight as I can get it um, to this top surface layer. So I'm going to spend some time right now and just kind of grind this down as smooth as I can since I have access to all of our uh, shop equipment over here. While I do, I better take advantage of it. So uh, yeah, we'll see. It still has clips on the back and it's it holds pretty tight just from slipping um, in the back underneath the little, uh, I don't know what you call it, glove box little thing or compartment thing. So uh, we'll see, and if I cannot get this to work, then I will just replicate this shape out of uh, either aluminum or some type of material and make my own that will fit with the shifter. So, we'll see. All right, guys, well, finished product right here. You can see this is actually a very, very, very thin piece of aluminum that is uh, adhered to this plastic frame. So I just took off a piece of that plastic frame when I realized that. And that's about as much clearance as I'm going to get out of this piece. So if this doesn't fit, then we will go back to the drawing board and make our own piece of aluminum. I can probably just 
reuse this frame if I do have to end up doing that. And then just kind of, I don't know, coming up with some idea to clear into it a little bit more. But it wasn't off by much, so I'm hopeful that that piece is going to fit, but we'll see. All right, guys. Well, here it is. We were able to get it back in. So I'm not going to have a uh, cup holder, but that's okay. I mean, I can still hold stuff in here. Just uh, this back reverse cable was just not going to clearance uh, with that there. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, run it like this. I redid the shift boot uh, or added it back on. So everything's solid. It looks pretty clean. And um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Just wanted to make that quick update to at least give you guys some type of progress and give you guys a heads up. If you do try something like this, you definitely want to use something uh, as far as the bolt that connects a shifter, something that will allow it to swivel um, forward and backwards, but not allow any side to side wiggle between where the shift rod connects and the bottom of the shifter itself. So you could use all kinds of things. You could use like a bearing that fits on both sides. If you find one that has, you know, a 10 millimeter uh, inner diameter, um, you could use a, a cotter and a pin uh, or a cotter pin and a dowel. Um, the only hard, that's what I was planning to do. But the only hard part about that is how would I get it tight to put the actual cotter pin in to the dowel? Uh, so that would be difficult. Um, so this was kind of the best of both worlds. Preferably, I think would have been perfect for this scenario would if I did have um, a bearing, just like a skateboard wheel bearing or any type of, you know, small bearing uh, that fit over that 10 millimeter inner diameter. I might try to Amazon one actually um, and put, put one of those on both sides. That way it will for sure be able to swivel. It's not going to undo the bolt at any time. So I'll test this out if this works and it uh, proves uh, longevity wise I'll keep it like this but if these start to back out and I know that it's you know eventually backing out then I will get some bearings in there and that will probably solve the problem permanently so um, yeah these are the things that you don't realize until you try something like this out and this is all flying by the seat of my pants so yeah but uh, overall I still love it uh, even when I was having to tight it, tighten it every day after work it was, I was always excited to drive it the next morning. So, um, once I get that little hiccup out of the way, this is an excellent shifter, totally changes the dy dynamic of the car. Um, those words are still true for me from the first get go. Um, and I can't wait to have this thing on track with this shifter setup. Um, much more ideal for that, uh, realm. So anyways, that's all quick one and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever it is. See you guys there. Peace.